section 10-2 series. So now suppose we're interested in the sum of the first n terms. So a series is a sum. So rather than listing out the terms, we're going to go ahead and add the terms. And we're going to have this new thing called sigma. It represents a sum. It's telling us to plug in k first, k equals 1 first, and then go up to n. So let's just do some examples to understand this notation. So the first example says find the sum from, one, from k equals 1 to 4 where the terms are k. So it just means we're going to plug in the first four terms. Um, I stop at 4 because the sum tells me to stop at 4. And so my first term is k, and we plug in 1. So my first term is 1. My second term is 2, 3, 4. So that's how we would write out that sum. If we wanted to find the sum, we could add them, but we're just practicing writing it out. So the next one, same idea, except we're going to do 10 terms, telling us to start with 1, find the sum of 2k minus 1. So I'm going to start writing out some terms. You're going to have to be a little bit more patient on this one. So my first term would be 2 times 1 minus 1. My second term would be 2 times 2 minus 1. So we're just plugging in. And we're going to do this up to 10. And then we'll simplify. 2 times 3 minus 1 plus 2 times 4 minus 1. It's a little long, so we have to do it 10 times. 2 times 5 minus 1. 2 times 6 minus 1. If you feel like you could finish this, pause the video and give this a try. 2 times 7 minus 1. 2 times 8 minus 1, 2 times 9 minus 1, and then my 10th term would be 2 times 10 minus 1. 10 tells us where to stop. So this is my sum. Um, I'm going to at least simplify these, um, but we don't need to add it up. We're just practicing again, understanding the notation. So just simplify each individual term. So 2 times 1 minus 1 would be 1, plus... 3, 4 minus 1, 6 minus 1 would be 5, 8 minus 1 would be 7, and you might be starting to notice a pattern, but if not, that's totally fine also. Um, we get 10 minus 1, which is 9, uh, 12 minus 1 is 11, 13, 16 minus 1, 17, or 15, 18 minus 1 is 17, and then my last term would be 20 minus 1 or 19. So that would be the sum. So the symbol, this new symbol, is just telling us to add up the terms. All right, let's try another one. So let's write this next one in summation notation. Um, so summation notation is writing it with this symbol. So let's maybe write it as a fraction, um, and then maybe we can try to rewrite it. So we have 9 out of 10 would be 9 tenths. 0 0.09 would be 9 one hundredths, so that's 9 out of 100. 9 out of 1,000, and then plus 9 out of 10,000. 1, 2, 3. Oops. Yeah. We're just adding a zero every time. So we have nine tenths, nine hundredths, nine thousandths, and then nine ten thousandths. So we're going to try the summation notation. So we're going to sum. We're going to start with k equals one. Um, I use k for series and then n for sequences. The letter is pretty arbitrary, though. You could use any letter. Um, I notice there's one, two, three, four terms. So we're going to stop at four. And then we're going to try to write this as a formula. So it looks like I have 9 over 10 plus 9 over 10 squared plus 9 over 10 cubed plus 9 over 10 to the fourth. So I think my series would be 9 over 10 to the k power. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4. And that would be summation notation.
Cool, so let's do some properties and we'll try some more examples. So some things we can do with series. If we have a constant, we can factor the constant out. So constant means it has nothing to do with k. So in this example above, 9 is a constant, and so I could have taken the 9 out. 10 is not a constant because it involves k. So that's what that rule is telling me. That would represent the same thing. Um, if I add a constant forever, it's just n times that constant. So an example could be if you were doing like 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 n times, because there's n of them. Right, if my series is going up to n, then it would just be n times 2 or 2n. Right, Whatever that n point is. That's how many times you're adding that number. And then you can also split them up by adding and subtracting. So if you have addition or subtraction, you can split them up into two series. Um, this only works for adding and subtracting, not multiplying or dividing. So sometimes that's useful to split it up.